Hello viewers, in this session we will solve some problems based on the theory covered so far. Like in the previous uh, review problem session, please try to pause the video after each question and try to solve it yourself before looking at the solution which I will anyway present here. Okay. So, let us start with uh, problems. Okay. So, the first question is as follows, question 1, it is a very simple question, uh, let us try to uh, look at uh, a contour integral. Okay. So, a very simple contour integral. So, evaluate integration over gamma e raised to z square by z minus i power 4 d z, where uh, gamma is the circle okay, as the circle of radius uh, 4 centered at the origin. Okay, uh, described in the positive direction, that is the counterclockwise direction once. So, uh, that is the question. So, I uh, will present the solution. Okay. So, this question is a simple exercise uh, in Cauchy's uh, integral formula for higher derivatives of analytic functions. Okay. So, uh, clearly if you try to uh, use the parameterization of gamma to actually compute the contour integral directly, uh, it will be rather tedious. Okay. So, uh, it is easier to use Cauchy's integral formula, okay. that is the point of this exercise. Okay. So, you should recognize the integral as uh, an integral of a certain form. So, if you consider f of z equals the numerator e raised to z squared, okay, then this integral, integral gamma, integral over gamma e power z squared by z minus i power 4 dz can be thought of as an integral of the form f of z by z minus a power 4 dz. Okay, by the Cauchy's uh, theorem version 3. Okay. So, if you have uh, or the uh, deformation theorem, uh, the integration over that kind of curve gamma of f of z by z minus a power 4 dz is going to be the same as integration over this circle C a r f of z by z minus a power 4 dz. So, you have the following situation, you have i here. Okay, and you have a circle of radius 4 around uh, origin. Okay, so, that is not to scale, but uh, uh, that is the picture. So, this is a circle of radius 4, that is your gamma. Okay. It is not a circle centered at i, but that does not matter by Cauchy's uh, theorem version 3. We know that integration over gamma of f of z by z minus i power 4 is a dz is equal to the integration over uh, a circle of radius r, okay? uh, circle of radius r around i r small enough let us say 1 okay? uh, f of z by z minus i power 4 dz. Okay? And once again this by the Cauchy's integral formula for the derivatives is 2 pi i times the third derivative we have a fourth power in the denominator. So, it is the third derivative of f at the point i. Okay, divided by uh, 3 factorial. For higher derivatives, we had the following formula integration C uh, a r okay, uh, f of z, uh, there are constants here, there are constants 2 pi i. Okay, so, n factorial divided by 2 pi i times integral over C a r of f of z by z minus a power n plus 1 dz. Okay, so, that is the Cauchy's integral formula. So, here we apply with this with n equals 3 to get uh, this. Okay. So, if we compute the third derivative of our f at i and uh, substitute and substitute it here, we, we are going to get the value of this integral. 
Okay. So, the third derivative of f itself is easy to compute. Well, uh, f is e power z squared f prime of z is uh, z squared 2 z e power z squared f double prime of z by the product rule is 2 e power z squared plus 4 z squared e power z squared. Okay. So, the third derivative of f is 2 e power z squared times 2 z 8 z e power z square uh, plus 8 z cube e power z square. So, 8, 4 plus 8 12 z e power z square plus 8 z cube e power z square. Okay. So, f triple prime at i is uh, 12 i e power minus 1 plus 8 minus i. So, this is minus 8 i e power minus 1 which is uh, 4 i by e. Okay, so, that is your f triple prime of i. Okay. So, substituting that in here, we get uh, 2 pi i by uh, 3 factorial 6 uh, times uh, 4 i by e, which is minus 4 pi by 3 e. So, that is your integration over gamma of f of okay, e power z squared by z minus i power 4. Okay, so, that is the solution uh, to this problem. The next question is as follows. Okay, so, uh, let f of z be an analytic function or be analytic on the unit disk. And suppose that the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to 1 by 1 minus modulus of z uh, for each z belongs to. Okay. So, under these circumstances, try to show that uh, the modulus of the nth derivative of f at the point 0 is at most uh, n plus 1 factorial uh, times e. Okay. So, the key here is to use an appropriate contour in the unit disk, okay, so that we can we can bound the nth uh, derivative. Okay. So, more precisely we will choose an appropriate uh, a circle of appropriate radius, so that the nth derivative at 0 can be bounded by the values of the function f uh, on that circle. Okay. So, please pause here and try to see if you can uh, come up with the solution and here I will present the solution. Okay. So, as I said uh, the idea is to choose an appropriate uh, uh, circle. Okay. So, if uh, gamma is uh, a circle okay, oriented in the uh, positive sense, okay. so positively oriented okay. mod z is equal to uh, 1 minus 1 by k. Okay. Let us decide what this k is uh, a little later let us just to see. Okay. So, then uh, what we get is the modulus of f of z okay, on gamma on the circle gamma modulus of f of z we know is less than or equal to 1 by 1 minus 1 minus 1 by k which gives us k. Cauchy's integral formula for the nth derivative okay, uh, at 0 is given by well f n of 0 okay, is uh, n factorial by 2 pi i times integral over uh, gamma. This particular gamma will work because f is analytic inside and on this circle okay, uh, of f of z by z power n plus 1 uh, d z. Okay. That is the Cauchy's integral formula uh, for the derivative nth derivative of f at 0. So, the modulus of the nth derivative of f at 0 is less than or equal to n factorial divided by 2 pi uh, 
uh, integration over gamma of the modulus of f of z divided by modulus of z power n plus 1 uh, mod d z. Okay. And on gamma we have bounded f of z, uh, it is bounded by k, we will set this k shortly. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to n factorial divided by 2 pi times integration over uh, gamma of k divided by well mod z is 1 minus 1 by k. So, I have 1 minus 1 by k power n plus 1 mod d z. So, on gamma okay, uh, uh, z is equal to r e power i theta, where r is equal to 1 minus 1 by k. Okay. So, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so, if that is the parameterization, then d z will uh, give us r i e power i theta d theta okay, or mod d z will be uh, r times uh, mod d theta. Okay. So, this expression here is less than or equal to n factorial divided by 2 pi times integration over gamma. Okay. Now, we have converted everything into theta. So, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi of k divided by 1 minus 1 by k power n plus 1 times 1 minus 1 by k, um, which is r here okay. and then modulus of d theta. Well, uh, we can take that to be d theta itself. I mean, uh, it is not the modulus, it is the absolute value. Okay. So, we can take that to be uh, d theta itself. Okay. And then uh, this uh, we see is after after some cancellation, uh, we see that this is less than or equal to or equal to uh, in fact n factorial divided by 2 pi integration from 0 to 2 pi uh, k power n plus uh, one factor here cancels with the denominator. Okay. Something like this one factor here cancels with one factor here okay. and so we get k power n uh, going to the top. So, we have k power n plus 1 which is k power n here uh, times k divided by k minus 1 raised to uh, n okay, and then uh, d theta. Okay. And then this is less than or equal to uh, n factorial uh, uh, divided by 2 pi. Well, now is the time to set k okay so or let's still decode this this looks like k by uh, k minus 1 uh, power n times k times d theta okay and since we want to show that uh, this is bounded by this nth derivative at 0 is bounded by uh, n plus 1 factorial times e okay so in order to get that n, n plus 1 factorial probably uh, correct to take k equals n plus 1. Okay. So, that k and this n factorial give us uh, n plus 1 factorial. Okay. So, this is take k equals n plus 1 fact n plus 1 rather. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to n plus 1 factorial divided by 2 pi okay, uh, times integration from 0 to 2 pi of uh, n plus 1 by n power n. Okay, and then uh, d theta. Okay, this is of course, this is a constant which is uh, clear of uh, the integration. So, we can actually put it outside the integration okay, and this is less than or equal to n plus 1 factorial divided by 2 pi times uh, 1 plus 1 by n power n uh, and then 2 pi. The integration from 0 to 2 pi of d theta gives us a 2 pi. So, we can cancel these and get uh, this is less than or equal to n plus 1 factorial times uh, this factor 1 plus 1 by n power n. Okay. And we know that uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is a sequence 1 plus 1 by n power n okay, is uh, an increasing uh, sequence okay, of um, of real numbers okay. and one proves in a uh, first course in real analysis that uh, this tends to E. 
okay, the limit of this increasing sequence um, uh, either one defines that to be E or uh, if E is defined otherwise, uh, then one proves that that converges to E. Okay. So, uh, in any case this is an increasing sequence. So, before we uh, go to the next problem, uh, we will introduce uh, some uh, terminology okay, uh, namely a convex uh, set and the convex hull of a uh, set of points. Okay. So, let us start with uh, a convex set. Okay. So, uh, a set is said to be convex if it has the property that if x and y belong to the set, then the line segment joining x and y belong to the set. Okay. So, uh, a set S is said to be convex okay. So, for simplicity uh, we will assume this is a subset of C. Okay. So, a set S contained in C is said to be convex if uh, uh, whenever x comma y uh, belong to S, then the line segment joining x and y is contained in S. Okay. So, another way to say this is well one can always parameterize uh, a line segment by T x plus uh, 1 minus T times uh, y. Okay. So, uh, T between 0 and 1 will parameterize the line segment joining x and y. Okay. So, if this belongs to S, this point belongs to S uh, for T between 0 and 1, whenever x and y belong to S, uh, then you say that uh, S is a convex set. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, convex sets could look like uh, this. Okay. So, the line segment itself is convex, because if you take any two points on the line segment x and y, the line segment joining them is contained within this line segment. So, it is a convex set. Okay. So, likewise if you take a, a triangular piece like that okay, and then uh, the inside of this along with the boundary that is a convex set. Okay. So, you pick any two points x comma y uh, inside the set okay, they could be on the boundary for example, the line segment joining them uh, is contained in the set. Okay, so, this is a convex. In general, the inside of the polygon okay, along with the boundary of the polygon if you wish is a convex set. Okay, so, that is a convex set and then uh, there is the concept of a convex hull. So, in order to um, consider uh, a convex set uh, which is uh, which contains a bunch of points, we can construct a uh, a convex hull which has uh, an additional minimality property as well. Okay. So, here is a convex hull. The convex hull of a set K contained in C is uh, a convex set uh, S contained in C okay, containing K. Okay, so, it contains K uh, not only that it is such that no proper subset of S uh, contains K. Okay, no proper convex subset I should say, uh, no proper convex subset of S uh, contains Okay. So, uh, such things are normally uh, constructed as follows. Uh, notice that, so note the intersection of the intersection of two convex sets is convex. In general, the intersection of uh, a collection of convex sets is convex. Okay. 
Okay. So, since this happens what you do is you consider the set of all convex sets which contain a given k and you take their intersection. Okay. So, let uh, G be a collection of all convex sets containing a given set k. Okay. Then, uh, the intersection of uh, all these, okay. so uh, intersection of S such that S belongs to G okay, uh, is a convex set by the abo above note, okay, is a convex set uh, containing K. Okay. And by construction, uh, this is the convex hull of uh, K, because no proper subset of this will contain uh, K, because if there is a, there were a proper subset of this which contains K, then it would belong to the uh, sub collection and then it would appear in the intersection okay. and then so uh, it would be the intersection uh, or a uh, super set of the intersection. Okay. So, uh, that cannot occur. So, there is no proper subset of this which contains um, co convex subset of this which contains uh, k. Okay. So, that is how we construct a convex hull. Uh, okay. So, and is a, so I will remark here that uh, this set intersection S belongs to G, S is a convex hull. So, that is how we construct uh, convex hulls. So, we will note one property of a convex hull, it is as follows or a uh, couple of them. Okay. So, uh, the convex hull of a finite number of points in C uh, is a is a polygon. Okay. So, this is intuitively clear. Okay. So, depending upon how many of them are collinear etcetera, okay, the geometry of the polygon differs, okay. but uh, eventually uh, some or all of them are going to be the vertices of the polygon. Okay. So, suppose some point is like this, some point is like that, then the and these three are collinear etcetera. So, uh, then eventually you will get a polygon. Uh, which will be the convex hull of uh, a bunch of these points. Okay. So, we will not prove this property, but uh, this is true. Okay. And then uh, it is one can actually uh, try to prove this property uh, by taking coordinates etcetera. Okay. So, this is easy to do. Okay. So, you just have to use the definition of a convex set and of a convex hull uh, to prove this. Okay. And then uh, the next uh, property that I want to state is that uh, let x 1, x 2, so on until x n okay, uh, belong to uh, a convex set k. Okay. Then uh, s 1, x 1 plus s 2, x 2 plus so on until s n, x n Okay, uh, belongs to k whenever 0 less than or equal to s i less than or equal to 1 and uh, the sum of s i's s 1 plus s 2 plus so on until s n is equal to 1. So, this is once again uh, easy to prove using the uh, uh, definition of a convex set. Okay. So, one can uh, show that uh, all the, this point okay, for any values of s like this uh, is uh, belongs to a convex set k, whenever these points start, when you start with these points in a convex set k. Okay. In particular, if you consider the convex hull of these bunch of points, it is a convex set okay. and so then this kind of uh, combination. Okay, uh, where uh, SIs are like this okay, uh, is also a point in that convex hull. Okay. So, with this we are ready to uh, now state the uh, 
next question okay so let z1 z2 so on until zn be uh, zeros be the zeros of a polynomial p of z Uh, show that the zeros of the derivative of p lie within the convex hull of these zeros okay uh, of the points z 1 through z n in the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, consider using the quotient p prime of z by p of z to prove the same. Okay. So, hint use p prime of z by p of z. Okay, so, try to solve this problem uh, and I will provide the solution here. Uh, the statement uh, of this problem is called the Gauss Lucas theorem. Okay, uh, so, the, the solution is as follows uh, let alpha be a 0 of uh, p prime of z. Okay. If alpha is one of the uh, z i's, okay, then it sure lies in the convex hull because the points themselves lie in the convex hull of those points. Okay. So, if alpha is one of the z i's, then alpha lies in the convex hull of z 1 through z n. Okay. Now, suppose that uh, alpha is not a 0. Okay. So, uh, if not, okay. so suppose now that uh, p of alpha is not equal to 0. Okay. So, alpha is not one of the z i's now. Okay. So, uh, in this case, uh, let me first write uh, p of z as some constant c times perhaps a constant c times z minus uh, z 1 times z minus z 2 so on until z minus z n because such a factorization is true for p of z because these are all the zeros of uh, p of z z 1 through z n are all the zeros. Okay. So, uh, perhaps there is a multiplying constant c there c belongs to uh, c c not equal to 0. Okay. So, c belongs to c minus 0 okay. uh, and uh, suppose p of z is like that. Okay. Then p prime of z is easy to calculate p prime of z each time you take the derivative of one factor which is 1 okay, and use the product rule. So, I can actually directly divide by p of z to get uh, p prime of z by p of z uh, is equal to 1 by z minus z 1. So, the factor which is missing in p prime uh, figures in the uh, in the reciprocal like this okay. and then there are um, p prime is the sum of uh, all these uh, factors. So, it is plus 1 by um, z minus z 2 plus 1 by uh, etcetera so on until plus 1 by z minus z n. Okay. So, then uh, since p of alpha we are assuming uh, is not 0 now. Okay. So, then uh, p prime of alpha by p of alpha is equal to 1 by alpha minus z 1 plus 1 by alpha minus z 2 plus 1 until 1 by alpha minus z n, okay. which is equal to 0 because the numerator p prime of alpha is equal to 0, alpha is a 0 of p prime by assumption. Okay. So, uh, so this is equal to 0 okay. and then we will use this equation uh, to do the following. So, we will use this particular equation. 
okay so first multiply the numerator and denominator of each of these terms uh, with the conjugate of the denominator okay so we get alpha bar minus z1 bar divided by uh, modulus of alpha minus z1 squared plus alpha bar minus z2 bar divided by modulus of alpha minus z2 squared etc plus alpha bar minus z n bar divided by alpha minus z n modulus squared is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, alpha bar times let me uh, uh, factor out an alpha bar I get uh, 1 by modulus of alpha minus z 1 squared plus 1 by alpha modulus of alpha minus z 2 squared plus so on plus 1 by modulus of alpha minus z n squared. Okay. And this is equal to on the right hand side I will collect these terms z 1 bar divided by uh, modulus of alpha minus z 1 bar etcetera. So, on the right hand side I get uh, sigma okay, uh, i or k equals 1 through n okay, of z k bar divided by the modulus of alpha minus z 1 z k squared. Okay. So, uh, now uh, notice that this is a real number let us call that a okay. and the coefficient of uh, z k bar is also a real number okay. and so let us call that uh, a k. Okay. So, this is a k 1 by this is a k. So, alpha bar times a is equal to sigma k equals 1 through n z k bar a k okay, where a k is equal to 1 by modulus of alpha minus z k square. Okay. Also notice that the sum of uh, a k s is actually equal to a okay. uh, and so a k by a is such that a k by a is in between 0 and 1 these are all modulus of uh, numbers complex numbers. So, they are positive or uh, 0 okay. and since the sum is equal to a sum of a k is equal to a uh, a k by a is in between 0 and 1 okay. and sigma a k by a is equal to 1. Okay. So, uh, this is where okay, uh, the second property of the convex hull that I mentioned is coming into picture. Let me go back. Okay. So, this s i s. So, these are the candidates a k by a s are candidates for s i s. Okay. So, uh, alpha bar. So, I will conjugate on both sides of this equation a and a k are real numbers. Okay. So, the conjugation does not affect them. So, what I get is alpha is equal to uh, sigma k equals 1 through uh, n of z k times a k by a. Okay. So, now we recognize that this is a combination like in the property 2. Okay. So, this is a uh, combination which lies in. So, this uh, this lies in this complex number lies in the convex hull of z 1 through z k or z n rather okay, uh, by property 2 above. Okay. So, which is what we want. So, alpha lies in the convex hull. Okay. So, uh, alpha lies in the convex hull of z 1 through z. Okay. So, in either case whether alpha is a 0 of p of z or not uh, alpha lies in the convex hull of z 1 through z n uh, which uh, proves the problem. Okay. And this uh, like I mentioned this is called the uh, Gauss Lucas theorem. So, the next question is as follows. Okay. Uh, so, this is an application of the Gauss Lucas theorem uh, show that the zeros of 
the polynomial p of z is equal to 1 plus 2 z plus 3 z square plus 1 until n z power n minus 1 lie inside the unit disk. b 0 1 bar. So, the uh, solution is as follows. Okay. So, try to see if you can work out the solution and I will present the solution here. Okay. So, uh, notice that p of z uh, looks like the derivative of z plus z squared plus so on until z power n. Okay. So, that prime means a derivative. Okay. So, p of z can be thought of as the derivative of that polynomial okay. and then uh, we will use the uh, gauss lucas theorem okay, uh, which says that the, the zeros of p of z lie in the convex hull of the zeros of this polynomial. Okay. And so, let us concentrate on this polynomial within the parentheses. So, this uh, polynomial can be factorized as z times 1 plus z plus z squared so on until z power n minus 1, okay, which is z times we will recognize that as z power n minus 1 divided by z minus 1. Okay. And uh, we recognize that uh, the this z power n minus 1, uh, the roots of this polynomial z power n minus 1 are precisely the nth roots of uh, unity and when we divide by z minus 1, we forget the root 1 itself. Okay. So, uh, if zeta k is equal to e power uh, 2 pi i k by n, okay, uh, 1 less than or equal to uh, k less than or equal to n minus 1, okay, then uh, zeta k is a uh, root of this polynomial uh, z plus z squared plus so on until z power n. Okay. And notice that 0 itself is a root of this polynomial. Okay. So, uh, 0 is also a root of z plus z squared plus so on until z power n. Okay. So, now the zeros uh, these are n minus 1 in number okay, and uh, 0 is including 0, we have n roots and an nth degree polynomial has at most n roots. So, we know all the n roots, these are all distinct that is the point. Okay. So, so, we now know all the roots of this. Okay. So, the zeros of uh, the given polynomial okay, of uh, p of z lie in the convex hull of uh, the set zeta uh, k, okay, uh, which is e power 2 pi i k like I have mentioned here. Okay. So, uh, this is zeta k uh, such that 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n minus 1 union 0. Okay. But now, what is the convex hull of these? Well, the roots of unity lie on the unit circle. Okay. So, they divide the unit circle into uh, equal number of circular pieces. Okay. So, uh, these zeta k uh, lie, okay, they look like e power i theta for some theta and lie on the unit circle. Okay, and 0 is in the center. Okay. So, the convex hull of uh, the roots of, okay, of this set okay, of the roots of z plus z squared plus so on until z power n okay, uh, is the unit disk. Okay, is actually is a subset of the unit disk. p bar 0 1. Okay. So, if k equals 3 for example, ok, 
okay we are looking at the third roots of unity and when you forget uh, one itself okay when you have this this and zero okay the roots of z plus z squared okay uh, when n is equal to 3, we have z plus z squared plus z cube. Okay? So, uh, so, this is an example z plus z squared plus z cube when n is equal to 3, you get this is z times 1 plus z plus z squared. The roots of these, this are uh, omega and omega squared, okay? the cube roots of unity which are here and here okay? and then you have 0 itself which is the root here. So, the convex hull is going to be this triangular region. Okay. So, this is an example. Okay. Uh, so, likewise you are going to get a subset of B bar 0, B 0 1 bar, the closure of B 0 1 okay. and uh, that is the convex hull. Okay. Uh, so, the zeros of P of z okay, um, definitely lie okay, in B 0 1 closure. Okay, so, that is a solution uh, to this problem. These kind of questions are uh, a standard. Okay. Uh, so, suppose f from g to c is analytic. Okay. So, I should start with let g be a region. So, g is a region and suppose f from g to c is analytic. Uh, and suppose that and f of z is a uh, real for all z belongs to g okay then show that f is constant Okay. So, a real value uh, analytic function has to be a constant function. Okay. So, uh, there are other uh, versions or other uh, kinds of problems which look like this. Okay. So, um, one can ask uh, that show that if modulus of f of z is constant then f is constant okay. or um, one can ask that if f of z is purely imaginary always then uh, show that f is constant okay and one can more generally ask that if the values of f of z lie on a line passing through uh, origin for example or on a straight line then show that f is constant etc okay so all these uh, will uh, will follow from a theorem which uh, we will do in the uh, next few or the next few sessions called the open mapping theorem, which says that uh, an analytic function should take open sets to open sets. Okay. So, or a non constant analytic function should take open sets to open sets. Okay. So, if f were to be non constant, it will take um, g, which is a region, which is an open set to an open set. Okay. So, what that means is that well, uh, so it cannot take in particular it cannot take c to the real axis which is not open in the complex plane okay, or a part of real axis any part of real axis which is not an open set in the complex plane. Likewise, it cannot take the complex plane to particular uh, circle for that matter okay, where uh, the modulus is fixed. Now, we can use uh, Cauchy Riemann equations directly. Uh, to show that um, f is a constant. Okay. So, for now since we do not have the open mapping theorem uh, at hand, we can use the Cauchy Riemann equations uh, to show this problem. Okay. So, uh, here is the solution. Okay. So, let z naught belong to g okay. and uh, let okay. so, f of z is equal to or f of z naught uh, is a real number okay, that is given f of z naught f of z is real. Let uh, s equals the set of all z belongs to g such that uh, f of z is equal to f of z naught. 
Okay, we will show that S is the whole set G. Okay, so firstly, uh, let's look at f of z, which is which looks like. Let me separate it into its real and imaginary parts, which looks like u of x y plus i times v of x y, and u and v satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay, it's given that f of z is always real, which means v of x y is identically the zero function. Okay, so uh, on G, so u of, this is u of x y plus uh, i times zero. By the Cauchy Riemann equations, we have what do we have? We have v of x y is zero implies u x the partial of u with respect to x is zero and the partial of u with respect to y which is minus the partial of v with respect to x that is also uh, zero. Okay, this is zero because uh, ux is equal to vy. Okay, and vy is zero. So both these are zero, and since G is a region, uh, there is a rectangular path connecting. Uh, there is a uh, R path connecting z naught and z. So using that rectangular path, you can uh, try to recover u of x y. Okay. Uh, by integrating along um, okay, uh, by integrating along the uh, line segments parallel to uh, x axis okay so on x axis okay line segments parallel to x axis so i'll just not say that i'll just say on z not z this is to indicate the rectangular path connecting uh, z naught and z okay and then you can integrate uh, with respect to y partially okay so uh, dx and then on the line segments connecting uh, z naught and z uh, okay uh, on the rectangular path connecting z naught and z on the uh, on the line segments which are parallel to y axis okay or y axis rather okay you can integrate with respect to uh, ui with respect to y Okay, and but these both both of these are zeros. Okay, so which means um, uh, both of these are given to be zero. Okay, and u x anyway is zero on um, on vertical line segments. Okay, and then u y is likewise zero on uh, horizontal line segments. So actually identically zero in the whole region. Okay, so this uh, gives you uh, the constant of integration. That's all. Okay, so two constants of integration. Okay, so uh, so u of x y is constant. Okay, so likewise, uh, so so well that that already shows that f of x y is a constant, a real constant. So uh, that is a solution to this problem. Okay, all right. So uh, the next uh, problem is as follows. So let u from c to r be uh, bounded harmonic function and suppose that uh, u is a real part of some analytic function f okay uh, on all of C. Okay, then show that u is bounded, u is constant rather. So what that means is show that u is a constant function. Okay, so uh, use the real part of f. Uh, for every complex number uh, z. Okay. So, try to solve this problem and I will present the solution here. Okay. So, let me first remark that uh, it can be shown that this supposition is unnecessary. What I mean by that is this is uh, additional, but since uh, we did not uh, show that in the theory, uh, we will assume this in addition to uh, u being a uh, bounded harmonic function. Okay. So, since u is the real part of f, 
okay, for every z belongs to c, what you can do is you can consider uh, e raised to f. Okay, e raised to f is analytic, or in fact, it is entire because f is entire. Okay, since f is entire, this f here in the problem is entire. Okay, so the modulus of e raised to f is going to be e raised to the real part of f at every point z, and that is e raised to u. Okay. So, since it is given that uh, u is uh, bounded, okay, so this is less than or equal to e raised to m, okay, where u okay, uh, is bounded. So, the modulus of u or the absolute value of u is less than or equal to m. Okay. It is a bounded function, so there is such an m. Okay. So, uh, e e raised to f is a bounded entire function. So, by Liouville's theorem, we know that uh, e power f is a constant function. That immediately implies that uh, f is a constant function. and which in turn shows that the real part of f uh, u is a constant function. Okay. So, it is also an easy exercise. Okay. So, uh, here are a uh, few more problems. Okay. So, here is the question um, find all z for which cosine z is real. Okay. So, the solution well you just have to look at the expression for cosine z this is e power i z plus e power minus i z by uh, 2 okay. and then this is real number. Okay. So, we have to use the fact that a uh, real number is equal to its conjugate. Okay. So, we will use that fact let us first see what this is e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2 this is equal to e power i uh, x minus y plus e raised to minus i x plus y divided by 2. This is equal to well this is cosine x plus i sin x uh, divided by e power y plus uh, cosine x minus i sin x times e power y divided by 2. Okay. So, this number should be equal to its conjugate okay, for the above condition. So, um, so, this number cosine x plus i sin x divided by e power y uh, plus cosine x minus i sin x times e power y divided by 2 is equal to its conjugate. The conjugate of this is going to be cosine x minus i sin x divided by e power y. Uh, plus cosine x uh, plus i sin x times e power y divided by 2. Okay. So, uh, upon simplification well these cosine x's cancel uh, these cosine x's cancel okay, and then uh, you are left with uh, two cancel of course. Okay. So, you are left with 2 i sin x divided by e power y is equal to 2 i sin x e power y. Okay. So, you end up with the equation sin x uh, times 1 minus e power 2 y is equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, well either sin x can be 0. So, uh, this is 0, this product is 0 if sin x is 0 or uh, if e power 2 y is equal to 1. Okay. Sin x is equal to 0 has the solution x equals n pi where uh, n is any integer okay. and then uh, uh, e power 2 y is 1 implies 2 uh, y has to be 0 which implies y is 0 which is the real axis. We know that cosine is real on the real axis okay. and whenever x is n pi uh, uh, even then uh, your co cosine z is real. Okay. So, these two uh, give you 
uh, the set of all points where cosine z is real. Okay, and um, we will end this problem session with this problem.